Welcome back. This next video is going to be super fun. We're going to be learning two additional ways to do cuts. Now we've already done fishing line cuts as well as around the body cuts. Today we're going to look at front of body cuts and false edge cuts. Let's start with front of body. The first thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take your weapon and I would like you to sit, into an, or sit down into an on guard position and I would like you to point your sword up in the air and make a big ice cream cone shape with your sword. So I'm spinning this in an inverted cone right here, making a big circle on the ceiling with my blade. Here you can see it from this angle. Here you can see it from this angle. And I can also do it in both directions. I can go clockwise and counterclockwise. But I want to make sure that I can make that big ice cream cone in both directions. Now that's the motion that we are going to be using to do these front of body cuts. And the tip of the blade is going to stay above and offline of our partner's face so that we're never endangering our partner's face. Now here's what a simple cut sequence would look like with around the body cuts, just to review. So here I am, I'm going to go shoulder, shoulder, hip, hip. I start with a fishing line cut and I weight shift around the body, shoulder, weight shift around the body, hip, weight shift around the body, hip. Now notice I'm using weight shifts on the preps and doing full around the body cuts. Now here's that same exercise, shoulder, shoulder, hip, hip, with front of body cuts. It's going to start exactly the same way with a fishing line cut, but then it's going to be very different. So I start fishing line cut, shoulder, shoulder, hip, hip. Now I'd like you to notice some differences. First off, I am not weight shifting back when I prep. In fact, I'm not even really compressing the sword much. I'm just bringing it back just a little bit in order to do that ice cream cone shape. So I've made a cut here. And then I bring the sword back just a little, make that ice cream cone shape, and then I pass forward and cut again on the other side. Ice cream cone, cut, ice cream cone, cut. And I'm not weight shifting back on those preps because I don't need to. So front of body cuts are, are not only cool looking and, and fun to do, they're also a way of changing the tempo of the fight. Instead of cut, weight shift, cut, weight shift. It's just cut, 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 cut. So it's a much faster tempo without those weight shifts in between. My targets are still exactly the same and I am still extending offline. So I don't want to see you ending with a broken line from your shoulder to your wrist and then changing direction. I don't want to see cut, cut, cut here with the hand in the middle. I want to see Extend it on one side, extend it on the other side, extend, extend. So let's take a look at that same exercise one more time from a few different angles. So here I am, left foot forward. I weight shift back and start with the fishing line cut, but this is the only weight shift I'm going to do. I pass forward, cut, cut, fully extended offline, cut. Fully extended offline, cut, fully extended offline, and I end weight shifted forward here. And I only weight shifted back once at the very beginning. Let's take a look at it from a diagonal this time. Here I am, left foot forward, I weight shift back and prep for a fishing line cut, and cut, 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 cut. So this is much faster and much smoother. You want to avoid having long pauses in between these cuts. As soon as you complete one cut, you immediately move on to the next and then the next. You don't need to go fast, but you do want to go smoothly without pauses. Okay, so those are front of body cuts. Now, let's take a look at a really sneaky thing that we can do with a false edge cut. So let's say I just did that last exercise and I ended with a front of body low line cut to my partner's right hip. Now, they have just parried rapier 
carry two, most likely. Which means their blade is pointed down and their right shoulder is now open. And if I wanted to, all I need to do is flip my wrist and give it a little bit of an extra lean. And then I go from cutting the hip to now cutting their shoulder. So I just add in a little flip, boom, right there at the end. Now the difference is very, very subtle. We're talking about a difference of only a few degrees. And my hand is not moving up. My hand was not all the way down here. My hand is right about at level with my hip, and I just supinate the wrist, changing the blade from a low line to a high line. And that's really all the difference there is between a low line and a high line attack. It's just the difference of a few degrees and the flip of a wrist. So that's a false edge cut. Now I could add this onto the back end of that sequence that I just did. So here I am, and cut, 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 flip at the very end. And I would just add in an extra little bit of lean. Now I could also do it on the other side if I wanted to. So let's see, I could do that sequence just reversed. So here we go, cut, 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 flip. And now I'm doing a false edge cut on my right side, their left side. And now I'm going from a supinated wrist to a pronated wrist. I'm not changing where my hand or my arm is pointing. I'm just changing the blade by a few degrees and going from supination to pronation. And that's it. So you can do these false edge cuts on your left, going from pronation to supination. And you can do these cuts on your right, going from supination to pronation. Now, in both cases, we are going from a low line to a high line. And these cuts really don't work going the opposite direction. If I'm cutting to a high line target on my left, my hand's already pronated and I can't, I can't supinate it this way, I can't cut in like that. that, that doesn't work. So these false edge attacks only go from low to high, but then once you have gone low to high, you can then change and go back because of the way that your palm is facing. So let me show you what I mean. If I cut high line, I can't easily go to low line. And it wouldn't make sense for me to try to go low line that way because then I'm like slicing through them, but they've already parried, that doesn't work. But if I go low, I can then flip up high, and then I can flip back down low. So if I start attacking with a true edge cut low, I can flip back and forth as many times as I want. But if I start attacking with a true edge cut and I end high, I'm stuck there. I can't go anywhere else. So these, true, these false edge cuts will always start with a true edge attack to the low line, then flip up to a false edge attack to the high line, and then, if we want, we can then go back down to low line. Now, we can also do this with footwork. So before, I showed you how I ended the sequence, and then I added in a false edge cut with a little bit of a lean in. And you can do that. But you can also do it with extra passing steps. So this is the exercise that I want you to perform right here. And it's a little bit shorter than the one before, but I really like it. So we're going to start left foot forward. We're going to start with a fishing line cut just before. This fishing line cut, however, is going to be to the hip. So we're going to go hip, hip, and then false edge, and then back to hip. So we fishing line cut to hip. No weight shift. I continue with a front of body cut to the other hip. And then I pass forward and do a false edge. And then I pass forward one last time and then flip it back down to a true edge. Now, it's going to be a little weird, because when you do it with footsteps, the false edge cut actually puts your body into a state of what's called disaffinity, where you're cutting into a closed hip. So it's a little weird. Here, I am cutting on the same side as the foot that's moving forward. Here, I'm cutting on the same side as the foot that's moving forward. Here, however, I'm going to be cutting into the side of the foot that's moving forward, instead of with it. But if I then continue, I end in a state of natural affinity, 
where it is as if I have done a true edge cut on the same side as the foot that's moving forward. So generally speaking, if you're going to do this with passing steps, you always want to end with a true edge cut on the side of the body that has your front foot forward. And that means that if you're doing each cut with a passing step, you're going to be doing them in multiples of three. So false, true, false. And then if you wanted to keep going, you could do another two. So I guess not multiples of three, but odd numbers of cuts. So we could do three, we could do five, we could even do seven, like that if we wanted to. Whew. All right, so let's take a look at that drill that you are going to be performing a few more times. First, let's take a look at it from straight on. So we're left foot forward, I weight shift back, I'm going to do a fishing line cut to their left hip. Cut, front of body cut to the other hip, pass forward again, false edge, pass forward, true edge. And then we end there. Now let's take a look at it facing the opposite direction. We're left foot forward here, weight shift back, do a fishing line cut to hip, front of body to other hip, false edge, true edge. Woo, I ran out of room there. So let's do it now from the side. Left foot forward. Weight shift back, spot that target, fishing line cut to hip, front of body cut to opposite hip, false edge, true edge. Right there. That is the exercise. So practice it a little bit and then film yourself doing it. Thanks so much.